This video involves strobing and flashing lights. It's showing how to make a very, very simple coil with two LEDs and a coil of wire to take power from a Qi wireless charger and use it to flash the LEDs. The reason the LEDs are flashing is because this device won't put out continuous power until it gets communication back from whatever it's charging. So because these can't provide that communication back, it simply keeps pulsing them and it makes them flash like little strobes, which is quite nice in its own right. Yeah, and could be used in some instances to provide just enough power to trickle charge something without any fancy circuitry. So I'm going to show you how to make one of these. And you've got a choice. You can either use standard wire like this. This is just 10 turns. Or you can use uh, the enameled copper wire. And I'm going to use the enameled copper wire. So before I actually make it, I'll show you what uh, this is going to involve. Here is the circuitry, it's very simple. It is the 20 turn coil and then two LEDs in inverse parallel. The reason they're in inverse parallel is because when current is being induced in the coil it will be both polarities and I'm not sure what the open circuit voltage of that is so to play safe I put the LEDs in either direction which means that each will clamp the, other, the voltage across the other and prevent overvolting the LEDs. The gallium nitride LEDs, the brighter colours, are very prone to damage with uh, too high a reverse voltage. So we're going to take an LED and we're going to bend the leads down sideways on it. We're then going to get the two of them and line them up in a bit of uh, white tack or blue tack so the long lead points to the short lead and the long lead here points to the short lead over there and that will effectively wire them in inverse parallel. Let's do that. So I've got a couple of LEDs here. I'm going to fold the leads down and then I'm going to stuff them into that blue tack. I shall uh, zoom down in this when I solder this. So here's the first one being stuffed into the blue tack and then I shall match the alignment of the leads to the other one so that the when I fold it over the short lead connects to the long lead. I'll zoom down for this right now. That's That's a good idea. So I'm folding these leads over and now I'm going to line them up in the plasticine blue tack play-doh or whatever you have, or white tack in this instance. It's probably not real white tack, it's probably a clone. I'm going to bend those leads just to make sure everything lines up perfectly and then I'm going to flow some soda onto those. Here is my soda. I've seen other people making these, but they only use a single LED. And there is another technique that uses a couple of diodes, a capacitor and uh, a single LED, which uh, basically rectifies it and doubles the voltage. So that's those uh, connected together now in inverse parallel. Let's make the coil. And for this, I'm going to be using this enameled copper wire. This is from Maplin in the past. Uh, 0.315 millimeter. I just chose a random value. I'm going to zoom out for this because I think it would benefit from being just a little bit further out. I'm going to use, I've tried various diameter coils. To be honest, I found the smaller ones were pretty good. So this is a piece of standard British 22 millimeter plumbing pipe. Water pipes. That's one, two, three, four, five. You don't have to be too neat about this. Six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. You could experiment with the number that you use. I just arbitrarily chose 20 after trying the 10 with the uh, thicker wire. The it kind of Because of the uh, bulk of this standard stranded wire, it tends to pack it out quite quickly. It tends to make quite a big coil. So I'm going to cut this off. And then I'm going to carefully slide this off, noting that it will want to do its best to be a slinky and suddenly explode into separate spirals. It may do that right now. So I'm just carefully winding that out while holding it together. And then to hold the turns in place, I'm actually going to use the wire itself to just put a couple of loops around. For some reason, this has reminded me of a Rogowski coil, a very specific type of coil used for a single-ended current sensing transformers and some industrial measurement applications. 
Now I'll bring those leads out parallel. And I'm going to zoom back in again because uh, I'm going to be soldering these to show you how to effectively strip the ends easily. Well, I'm not really stripping the ends. So this is enameled copper wire. And all I'm really going to do is I'm going to get the solder iron in and I'm going to flow some, put it under the wire and I'm going to flow some solder on and then just basically slide it backwards and forwards in that. Hopefully, depending on the type of in, the lacquer used, it will tin the end, it will actually melt the insulation off. The other options you have are to use a, a flame to do that and also a mild abrasive or a sharp knife to just gently sort of scrape it off. Now I've bared that, where are my LEDs? I shall solder it to the LEDs. First, this side. Just reflowing the solder briefly, then let it cool so it doesn't move. If you went straight over to the other side, it would potentially desolder the LEDs from each other completely when you remelted the solder on the other side. And that's the second side done. And theoretically, no, let's, uh, let's be more patient. See exactly what I said there about not being patient. Let the solder cool and set and harden without blowing on it. So now, theoretically, this is going to be a little blue strobe. It is. It's a quite a bright blue strobe. That's quite nice. But that is it. Uh, you can experiment. You can use multiple coil, but after a point, uh, it gets a bit miffed about the load and it will start uh, flagging up. It's detecting a sort of inductive short circuit and it might start just strobing them. It's doing okay so far. Let's see, it, but uh, it, some of them are pulling the voltage down with the coils and actually sort of effectively screening the other one. Now, there's another thing you can do with these. It may or may not work. I'm going to have to turn the light off for this one. So I'm turning the light off and I'm going to take the exposure off. And I'm going to bring my phone in. And I'm going to unlock it. And at this point in time, the near field communication coil on the back is active. Depending on the coil you use, you'll see it pulsing. Uh, it's actually looking for something in the vicinity. And it won't do it all the time. It will generally detect the movement. It will do it uh, occasionally, or it will detect the movement of the phone. Then it will do a, a few bursts of these pulses. I had no luck with uh, the others doing this. Now, did I have any, any of these coils do it? Nope. It only seemed to be that one with 10 turns. Maybe the higher number of turns is just... Uh, or the higher voltage the LEDs is an issue, but it didn't seem to work with the others, which is a shame, really. But that's okay. But it does work. This is going to be so bright. Yeah, super stroboscope. See, that's what I warned you at the beginning. It's going to be super bright. Right, the light is coming back. Watch your eyes. Not that your eyes haven't been fried by my disco strobe as it is. But there we go. It's a very silly, sort of simple project. If it's, it, you could uh, make ornaments out of this. And you know how McDonald's rest? I don't know if they, it's the same around the world, but they have these uh, inductive charging pads built into the tables at McDonald's. So it means you could make a little ornament. Uh, and when placed on it, it would strobe and pulse. And if you wanted, you could apply a little sort of rectifier, discrete rectifier, um, this will be fairly high frequency, but uh, you could make a little rectifier and a capacitor and it would charge it up and it would actually make the LEDs light continually. But that's just a novel thing. It's quite fun, actually. As you can see, I've been making quite a few coils. But there we go, the Chi strobe. Um, yeah, pretty neat. Um, this uh, larger coil is no better than the smaller one. I'm surprised by that. I thought the bigger was going to be better. But it turns out this little 22 millimeter, which is just under an inch, uh, is absolutely fine. It actually, if anything, it looks as though it's really driving the LEDs quite hard. But there we go. Uh, how to make your own little McDonald's table strobe that's powered inductively from those coils.